the red light goes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So I just asked in Laramie, um, average, average um, tour of duty that you've had as a filemaker developer. Um, anybody less than three years? Okay. Um, anybody less than two? Okay. So, two years less? Less than two years with FileMaker? Um, <laughs> more than five, obviously, everybody else more than five kind of thing, yeah, generally? Anybody more than 10? Okay, anybody more than 15, 20, okay? Okay, well, we got a couple of graybeards in here with me. Okay. Um, I'm Dave Knight. Uh, many of you guys know me, some of you don't. Um, been around um, doing FileMaker since about 1990, so about 20 years now. Um, Started off like many of you as I just started using it, and next thing you know, I'm building it, and next thing you know, I'm getting kind of good at it. So over the years, I've gotten a little stronger at some things and so forth, and now I'm actually at the point where my skill set is declining. Um, <laughs> I'm actually still a pretty decent developer, but I run a business now, and I actually have a bunch of developers underneath me, so I have focus on a lot of the things. I mean, it's kind of interesting to look at what you have up here. A lot of the things you guys are talking about have absolutely nothing to do with software. They have a lot to do with, with interpretation and analysis and, and understanding <coughs> and communication and so forth. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that today with some, some points on that. Um, in terms of my credentials, 20 years final maker, been an FBA member for uh, I don't know, 15 years or so. Uh, we are Angel City Data is the name of my company. We are one of the about 40 platinum members in the country, in the world, I guess. So uh, it's a nice feeling to sit there and say we're one of 40. Uh, I think there's about 3,000 FileMaker developers, you know, theoretically in the world, and so we're one of the top. Um, last year we were really fortunate, and we were we were uh, awarded the FBA Business Partner of the Year for North and South America. So that's kind of like the for for 2009. We're best in show. Um, that's going to change very quickly because I don't think we're going to get it again next year. But uh, it was very nice to have that distinction. Uh, I'm also one of the guys that's one of the co-founders of FM Disc, which is one of the larger FileMaker developer groups in the country. And we meet pretty much monthly at um, a location in, in Los Angeles. There's probably how many FM Disc members? We got at least three. Yeah, there we go. So we've got about 150, 200 people that belong to the group. We get about 50, 60 people at every meeting. And, and we've got some great high-level topics and conversations. And it's a really great group. So um, as a developer, um, this is one of those things where, again, last year I came up here and I didn't prepare a lot. And, and yet everybody seemed to get a decent amount out of it. So same deal. I tried the same recipe. I didn't prepare a whole lot because I like to be able to be dynamic in the group and look at stuff that you guys are interested in and try to adapt to that. Um, and most of this stuff is stuff I'm pretty comfortable, you know, talking about when it comes to project management, business analysis, discovery, needs gathering, and things of that nature. Um, I have built probably 600, 700 systems over the years. So I've, been, I've built an awful lot of database systems, and I've managed and d done discovery design on projects that have had multiple developers on it. Uh, and we've worked on mom and pop systems all the way up to Fortune 50 companies and so forth. So we've got a lot of scale. Our, our company is at the point right now where at any point in time we probably have between 15 and maybe 30 open projects at a time. So we have to know how to manage our projects effectively or we get really bogged down in the minutia. So one of the things that I like to do, I, I guess what, what John was kind of talking about is the business side of the analysis and the discovery. Um, you can kind of say in, in one respect, I'm going to write this very small and get rid of it in a bit. Um, and those are kind of the four D's of, of building a database. You find out what they want, come up with an idea that's going to suit them, build something that is, you know, the yield of this, and then obviously get it out to the people and get them using it, right? So these are the parts right here. This is the funniest part, too, is, is when, I don't know about how many, how many of you guys are in-house developers? Or how many in-house developers are you here? Okay, so the vast majority of you are third-party consultants. And for that particular <coughs> scenario, um, you've got to justify your position as a developer. You have to sit there and talk with them and say, okay, well, we're going to do these things. Most customers think that this is the magic right there. Oh my God, you know how to drag things onto layouts and build fields and create relationships, right? Everybody's like, oh my God, he did this script and it's got an if statement in it. And for developers who've been around for a long time, you go, yeah, that's okay. And for the developers who have really been around for a long time, 
This is just nuts and bolts. I can build a wall out of bricks or stone or, or wood or, or steel if you want. This is just semantics. It's getting this part right. That's the very hard part. Anybody disagree with that who's as old as me? No? Um, this is really the hard part. And that's the hardest part to justify to the customer. So one of the things that we always have to kind of do is go, hey, we need to spend some time doing this. No, can't you just start building the software? Yeah, we could, but that's not the right way. That's people who just get out the boards and the nails and start hammering stuff together and then find out later that it's not going to stand up to a storm. It's like trying to build a building without having an architect design it. Set of plans, ma'am. Got to have a set of plans, right? Otherwise, you're just laying, you're laying tracks out in front of the locomotive. And, you know, you, you can't make course changes. You can't see where the valleys and the hills are and so forth. So you really want to pay attention to that. This is the critical part. This is the hardest thing I feel that we do, and it's the hardest thing to justify getting paid for. It's the thing that everybody goes, oh, come on, we don't need these meetings, and why are you spending so much time on this? And, and yet, that, if you get this part right, everything else goes relatively smoothly. If you, if you nail this part down, everything else is going to fall in. How many people have seen those, uh, those, those shows on Discovery, you know, channels, like Destroyed in Seconds? Have you seen those? <laughs> <laughs> the bridge over the Washington Gorge is doing this kind of thing, right? Is it the construction that went wrong right there? Mm -hmm. It was somebody doing good Discovery design, figuring out how windy it is over this pass. Figuring out, can this, this vertical takeoff and landing plane take off right? If they get the designs right, all the rest of this stuff is going to be great. The development comes easy afterwards. I will tell you right now that if I do a, a good discovery and a design, I can hand that document to any good developer, and they're going to be able to go, I get it. I get what's supposed to happen right now, because somebody's done a good set of blueprints for this, and it's going to give me a, an understanding. And again, what a good understanding of this is, is what do we expect for the UI, and how is this going to tap into the SQL? And what does the efficiency need to be? And do we have nice organized layouts? And what's going to happen? Do we need web access? And what's the expectation of that? All of these things are going to flow into this phase if you nail it down there. Right? So, the business analysis, a lot of people, how many people find themselves struggling when they're sitting down with that customer at the first meeting or two, trying to just go, where do we get started? Anybody? Yeah, it, it's a little tricky. It's, it's like this big elephant, and you're trying to just, you got to try to eat the whole thing, and you got to try to start by getting some nibbles off of it a little bit somewhere. And it's very difficult, and it's very um, overwhelming at times. And so one of the things is to not get, um, understand, many of you guys understand the whole concept of, how many people know the difference between spiral and waterfall development? Waterfall development is, Get all your information, then do all your design, then build, then deploy. And the um, so that's the waterfall method. The spiral development method is do a little discovery, a little bit of building, a little bit of deploying and testing, and then do a little bit more, and then do a little bit more, and do a little bit more. A lot of people say, oh, this is the best way. And some people say this is the old government way. They both have their advantages. Um, but during the discovery phase, give yourself time to do this. When you're sitting down with a customer, do not expect that you're going to dissolve and digest every single thing that comes out of their mouth in the very first couple of meetings. Okay? It's going to take some time. It's a big, uh, crazy process. It's going to take a long time for you guys to get your heads around. So give yourself that time. Don't let the customer, and what the customer is going to want to immediately do, they're going to want to go down a rabbit hole, and they're going to want to pull you with them. Here, watch, we do this PO thing, and it's like, no, 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 no. The very, very first thing that I do with any customer, I sit down, they always want to show me their screen. Come here, let me show you. No, no, no. I will not sit down. I will not look at a screen with a customer for the first 30 minutes. Tell me about yourself. Tell me about your business. What are you guys trying to do? Oh, we're a label. You know, we're, we manufacture um, fleece jackets. Great. How are you guys different than your competition? Well, ours are nicer. They're better quality. We can customize them. Great. How many years have you been in business? 15 years. How did you start? Well, me and my brother in the basement, and then we got bigger and bigger. Great. How many people do you have now? We've got 50 or 60 people. Wow, that's a pretty high growth rate. I'm absorbing all this stuff about the company culture and what's going on and where they're trying to go. One of the things that I, I got, Stephen Gallagher is going to be here um, tomorrow? Today. Today. One of the things that he says at his 
meetings, which I have adopted, and I 